In this video, I want to talk about cyanobacteria, go over what it is, how it's deadly, how to kill it. Uh, now, before I begin, uh, down below there's a link. If you click on it, I'm giving away a free uh, video guide about uh, giving you tips on shopping for supplements and alternative medicines. Now, cyanobacteria could also be known as blue-green algae, but it's not algae, it's really a bacteria. In fact, cyano really means blue or darkest blue, and it's a bacteria, so that's how the name got created. Um, I'm not sure if you're following the Olympics, but there's a story about the, the diving pool turning like a kind of like a greenish color, kind of bluish, and yeah, sounds like cyanobacteria to me. Now you can also see it, of course, in fish tanks, ponds, lakes. Uh, there's even like really patches of it on the surface, possibly if it's, if it's a lot of it. Uh, now, not all of them are really toxic or unhealthy. Uh, some scientists aren't really sure, you know, what causes them to be toxic. Some species that are known for being toxic are not. Sometimes they're not toxic, then the next day they are. So it really baffles scientists. Uh, at a time, it was thought that 10% of them were deadly or not healthy. Now it's believed that maybe 40 to 70% are toxic. So, so at this point, you might be wondering, well, how do you kill it? You know, perhaps you have it in like a fish tank or something, right? Well, if you do have it in a fish tank, uh, the classic solution is antibiotics, uh, just like with humans, right? If you get like a bacterial infection, you want antibiotics. Um, the bad news is, well, it kills off the healthy bacteria in the fish tank, just like in your body. Uh, that's one of the bad news about it. Uh, plus, but well, the good news is, though, it, it, you can see results very quickly. You start start killing them off. But the bad news is, well, the dead bodies become food for the other bacteria, and they can spur on growth. All right, well, another idea is to kind of eliminate their food source, um, which is excess nutrients and organics. Uh, there's products out there you can buy that help you with this. Uh, you can physically remove them as well. It takes a little bit more time, but just like with dieting, sometimes a slow approach is better than the yo-yo approach where you make fast changes, but then you change right back. Um, so now, the bad news is throughout time, this whole cyanobacteria has been increasing in growth. Um, and according to Environmental Monitor, a study by this, this group. Yeah, humans were responsible, of course. We mess up the environment. Uh, mostly this is due to runoff of excess nutrients to waterways. Um, and speaking of that, uh, if you want to prevent this whole blue-green algae in ponds and lakes and stuff, controlling excess nutrients and removing that is how you can prevent it. Um, another idea is increasing the water flow into lakes in these waterways. Mixing in phytoplankton can help. Uh, now, to pre prevent this bacteria in, like, say, like a fish tank, uh, the best thing to do is really just keep a clean fish tank. You know, change the water. Um, make sh now, this, this, this algae grows on light, so not having too much light all the time, you know, reducing the light to the fish tank can be helpful as well. Uh, ensuring there's not too many nutrients in the water, and that's what happens. If you have a fish tank, it just it takes a lot of effort to keep a, a good one there. It takes a lot of effort and time to maintain it, make sure it's clean, so that you don't get this crap. All right. Now, if you're wondering how dangerous this whole bacteria is, because you mentioned, because I mentioned it was toxic, um, some species are to humans. Well, it can definitely be deadly to say animals, fish birds, pets, uh, can even kill them too. Uh, when we're humans, we don't like it and re results very vary according to a lot of different things. Like if it comes into your contact with your skin or if you drink some of it, there's different symptoms. Um, but if you swim in the waters with this bacteria, it can result in irritation like a, like a skin rash. Um, some people call it a swimmer's itch. Uh, eye irritation, it can result in blisters around the nose, mouth, um, even like asthma. If you drink it in, the symptoms could be stomach pains, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, nausea, sore throat, head pains, muscle pains. There's even a species out there that's really bad for the kidneys and can cause kidney um, disease. 
Um, and if that's not worse enough, there's other there's species out there that really targets the um, nervous system, uh, leading to problems like lethargy, confusion, uh, memory loss, and high doses, even death in humans. So if you want to get some ideas on really eliminating bacteria um, without using antibiotics, there's a lot of ideas out there, believe it or not, like, like herbal medicine that can help. I um, highly encourage you, uh, if, you want, well, if you want to learn more about this, click on the link below um, where our, I'm giving away a free video guide on you know, shopping for supplements that can be helpful, it's like to your immune system. I compare products back to back, really simplify it on what you should look for and what you should avoid in a supplement, even share my own ideas. Um, I definitely go over herbs in a lot of detail, um, show you, you know, how to save a bunch of money in herbs and really make it very easy and convenient to purchase these products. Um, I go over alternative medicine as well in a lot more detail on how it can solve a ton of health problems. Um, so anyways, if you want to learn more, click that link below. Uh, thanks for watching, being open-minded. Um, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and have a wonderful rest of your day.